basis on which all my work rests is the principle of equal consideration of interests. All sentient beings, all beings capable of feeling, of experiencing pain or pleasure, have interests. And in my view, we should give the same weight to their similar interests, irrespective of considerations like differences of race or sex or species. Just as we reject racism and sexism, so we should reject speciesism. <coughs> Opposition or resistance to this view can perhaps be explained as, refre as reflecting a preference for our own kind, which can be something that has evolved in the past through which our ancestors have passed. But that evolutionary explanation is in no way a justification for it, any more than the existence of such an evolved preference for one's own race could justify racism. In ideological terms, at least in the West, most of the justifications of speciesism, of the way we treat animals, of the way we disregard the interest of animals, most of those justifications rest ultimately on a religious view. On the view, for example, that humans alone are made in the image of God. Or on that verse in the book of Genesis that says, the already mentioned tonight, that says that God gives us dominion to rule over the animals. And that God accepts the idea that the fear and dread of us humans should be experienced by all animals. Or perhaps on the idea that we humans alone are in possession <coughs> of immortal souls. That is why in the past, those Christian thinkers who have had the greatest influence in the development of Christian thought, <coughs> men like Paul or Augustine or Thomas Aquinas, have all said that we have no duty to animals and that if, if there is any reason at all not to be cruel to them, it is only because if we are cruel to animals we might develop a cruel disposition <coughs> that would lead us also to be cruel to humans. Sadly, even Immanuel Kant, a greater philosopher than the others I've mentioned, was so deeply imbued in the Christian tradition in which he was brought up that he took the same view <coughs> and denied that there are any direct duties to animals. That's why I think it's very important that Giordano Bruno Stiftung, as part of its critique of religion and religious thinking, should also endorse the animal rights movement and specifically the great faith project. I am very pleased by that recognition of this important connection between the two, that once we free ourselves from the religious ideology, we also must take a different ethical view towards animals. Now you might ask, why is it if this principle of equal consideration of interest applies to all sentient beings? Why the Great Ape Project? Why are we singling out a small subcategory of all those animals and asking for special rights for them? The idea that Carla Cavallari and I have, and let me say here very clearly that the original idea belongs to Paolo Cavallari and that I came in to support it at an early stage to help develop it. Let me say that this original idea was to see the great apes as a bridge between humans and other animals. I think as Colin Goldner put it also well in his remarks when he said it's, it's a door opener. It, I would see it as bridging the gulf, the artificial
artificial gulf that we have built, we have dug between humans and other animals. Because the great apes are so close to us, because we can recognize emotion, because we can recognize that they are capable of thinking and of planning, and you saw that very clearly in Falka Summer's excellent video clips that it showed us. Because of all of that, the case for granting them, in particular, basic rights to life, liberty, and freedom from torture seems to us undeniable. Let me just add here, in parenthesis, to forestall misconceptions that unfortunately are still circulating in the German media. That is, it is completely false to claim that we would grant to great apes rights that disabled human beings do not have. The right to life is, in my view, not absolute or inalienable for a great ape any more than it is for a human being. Because in both cases, there can be circumstances, perhaps rarely, but there can be circumstances in which, sadly, the prospects of future life are so full of suffering that euthanasia is the best option. There is no claim, as the media of someone said, that we somehow put apes above humans. Now, the Great Ape Project, Project has made some progress since 1993, and I'm going to leave it to Paolo Caballero to say a bit more about that. But it is certainly true, as Colin Grodner has just said, that it is not as much progress as we would have loved. I welcome all efforts to reinvigorate, and I thank the Giordano Bruno Stiftung for what it has done and for what I hope it will do to help spread the idea. But let me also add that the, the Great Ape Project is one strategy among others in the larger movement to bring equal consideration to animals, and the movement continues to gain adherence and to make progress in that direction in a wide variety of arenas, and I hope that with your support and the support of millions of other caring and compassionate people throughout the world, we will continue to make that progress. Thank you very much.